science is incredible, but it's also unpredictable. For every experiment that has turned out an unforgettable result, there's been a thousand more that have ended horribly. Today we're highlighting the worst of the worst. Or, well, some that aren't that bad. But still, these guys made some mistakes. From a very sketchy Russian experiment to an unintentionally colorful discovery. Let's take a look at 20 science experiments that went horribly wrong. <sighs> Number 20. Russian Sleep Experiment Pretty sure that there are no more sinister words in the entirety of the English language than secret experiment in a covert Soviet test facility. Every word just gets more and more sinister than the one that came before. But believe it or not, the supposed reality is even worse. The experiment was happening in the late 1940s. The military sanctioned experiment featured five political prisoners who were held in a sealed gas chamber with an airborne stimulant administered constantly to keep them awake for 30 consecutive days. To keep them willing and cooperative, the people behind the experiment told the subjects that they would be freed from prison if they managed to complete it. Well, it didn't quite go how they planned, let's put it that way. For the first few days, everything was fine, despite a few dark conversations, but then after nine days, one subject started screaming uncontrollably controllably for hours, and nobody reacted. He screamed for so long that eventually his vocal cords tore, rendering him mute. When a second subject started screaming, the others began to cover the windows with poop and book pages. Days after the bizarre event, the researchers turned off the gas and went into the chamber, discovering that the surviving members had severely mutilated themselves, resulting in four inches of blood. Amazingly, all of the surviving subjects were shown to exhibit extreme strength and the ability to survive lethal wounds. However, if they slept, uh, well, they would die. So that's fun. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Mavane. Let's head back to the glory that was 1856, as the world continues its slow march to the technology age. Malaria continues to be an unsolvable problem, but as many of the world's most brilliant minds work to find a solution, one is on the cusp of brilliance, just not in the way he intended. Of course, William Henry Perkin was attempting to produce quinine, a chemical designed to help treat malaria, but instead of quinine, Perkin found that his beakers were filled with a dirty brown sludge. Naturally, he grabbed some alcohol and attempted to clear the stuff out, but when he poured the alcohol inside, the sludge became a bright, rich fuchsia purple dye. As it turns out, Perkin had created the world's first synthetic dye. Completely by accident, impressed with his unintentional find, Perkin called the dye Mavane and became the world's first person to discover a synthetic dye. Before Perkin's big find, dyes and pigments had to be sourced from natural sources, which proved to be a very expensive hassle. Perkin had proved that you could manufacture the same thing for a much more affordable and convenient effort, and history has often thanked him for finding a way for us to cut corners. As it should! Number 18. Hurricane Seeding Throughout history, humanity has always searched for ways to try and control or otherwise manipulate the weather. By far, the most important efforts revolved around the threats of natural disasters. How can we best protect ourselves against the imminent threats of things like hurricanes and floods? Uh, fly planes into them? In 1947, Navy pilots came up with an ingenious solution to the hurricane problem. Utilizing a Navy B-17 aircraft, 
aircraft, pilots flew right into the middle of a hurricane off the coast of Florida and dumped several pounds of crushed, dry ice into it just to see what would happen. After the seeding, the hurricane suddenly switched course, heading toward Georgia and South Carolina and causing a huge outcry in those regions. The people behind the seeding effort had no idea if the dry ice had provoked the hurricane to change directions, but it didn't earn them any praise, that's pretty clear. This was the first in what would become known as hurricane seeding experiments throughout the 1950s and 60s. Experts in various areas of America continued to experiment, hoping to somehow learn how to control and manipulate these unpredictable weather storms. And as you've probably guessed, they haven't succeeded, but hey, they'll continue trying, I'm sure. Number 17. The Balloon Ride of Death for hundreds of years, hot air balloons have been a source of magic and adventure. Think of how many stories you've read of people traveling all over the world in hot air balloons, but not everybody is so lucky. In fact, one balloon ride turned out to be pretty harrowing. In 1875, Gaston de Sandier, Joseph Croce Spinelli, and Theodore Savelle left Paris in a hot air balloon looking to study the effects of breathing oxygen at great heights. Early experiments had been promising, but now they were going to venture into the upper atmosphere to study the meteorological phenomena up there. They also wanted to beat a previous effort, which had seen a scientist almost lose his life due to a lack of oxygen. The trio adventured so far up that they almost reached 26,000 feet high. The death zone in which humans cannot survive. Asphyxiation hit the trio who couldn't reach their oxygen in time. Somehow to Sandier woke up as the balloon was hurtling back toward Earth. To his horror, he found that his two traveling companions were dead, their mouths full of blood. He was the only one to survive the asphyxiation, as well as the fall, but he didn't escape unscathed. When he landed, he was at least partially deaf, and yet he continued making regular hot air balloon journeys. Well, you have to admire his commitment. Number 16. Thomas Edison's X-Ray Eyes Thomas Edison is one of history's great inventors, and for a good reason. In the late 19th century, Edison's sprawling complex of factories were known to be able to produce anything from train engines to wristwatches, but everyone who worked there was also willing, exposing themselves to some dangers in the name of science. Clarence Madison Dali was one of the many scientists who worked in Edison's laboratory. His work was primarily focused on incandescent lamps, and it was here that in 1895 he accidentally stumbled upon an unknown type of radiation. When a gas-filled vacuum tube was wrapped in heavy black paper, it would produce a green fluorescent light. He called it X-ray. A week after the discovery, he took the very first X-ray image of his wife's hand, revealing her finger bones. It became a viral sensation long before YouTube or the internet was a thing. Edison was so impressed that he tasked Dolly with continuing to test the new find, hoping to explore the possibilities of this new tool. Of course, nobody could have known that. While Dolly was experimenting for hours on end, he was exposing himself to a lot of poisonous radiation. Years later, his hands looked as if they'd been scalded. Edison would eventually put an end to the experiments, having seen the negative health impacts, and would be scared of x-rays for the rest of his life. Number 15. Manhattan Project Nuclear weapons are, by far, one of the most controversial inventions in human history. Depending on your perspective, this is either the most formidable defense system in the world, or a dangerous weapon capable of ending life on Earth as we know it. Either way, it's probably not something to mess with. On July 16th, 1945, the world experienced its very first nuclear explosion as a plutonium implosion device was tested south of Los Alamos, New Mexico. The bomb, known as Gadget, detonated at around 5.30 a.m. over the New Mexico desert, releasing with it around 18.6 kilotons of sheer power. The force was so intense that the tower was instantly vaporized, the surrounding asphalt and sand being transformed into green glass. Observers were knocked to the ground by the ferocious blast, and the test was officially declared a success. The U.S. could ready the weapon for use 
use. The test site is now owned by the U.S. Department of Defense, with only a few pieces of the green glass remaining. The site is open to the public twice a year, with tours given on request. But why anybody would want to visit a nuclear test site is uh, quite a mystery to me. Number 14. The New Ball if history's taught us anything, it's that new things suck. Seriously, when was the last time somebody created an all-new recipe that wasn't 200 times worse than the one that came before? Well, in June 2006, the NBA decided to get in on the new trend. They quickly came to regret it. In what was a pretty self-congratulatory press release, the NBA announced that they were making the first change to the basketball in 35 years and only the second in 60 seconds. Rather than the typical eight-panel leather ball, the NBA would shift to a whole new ball made of proprietary cross and microfiber. At the time, some of the players saw the change as a positive, citing a better grip of the ball, but it didn't matter too much. After two months of games and a whole host of complaints from the players, the NBA was forced to make yet another change to the balls. Starting on the first day of 2000, the league would return to the classic ball. To this date, this may well be one of the worst business decisions the NBA ever made. When Shaquille O'Neal comes out and says that you're making an awful decision, you know that you've done something wrong. Number 13. 10 Cent Beer Night the 1970s were a pretty wild time if you're someone who enjoys a little bit of the free and easy life. And by that, I mean the drugs were everywhere and the drinks were easy to find, especially if you supported the Cleveland Indians. On June 4th, 1974, the Cleveland Indians held an all-new promotion during a game against the Texas Rangers. The team would give unhappy people who rooted for the losing team a beer for 10 cents. You can imagine how this went, right? All of this came about because the Indians were a terrible team back in the day, and this this was management's way of keeping the fans somewhat invested. Well, they sure were invested. Once they were completely hammered and irritated, they kicked off a pretty drastic riot that, for some reason, caught management completely off guard. To be fair to them, the surprise wasn't completely unwarranted. The Texas Rangers themselves had done a similar thing, but their promotion hadn't ended in a riot. I guess that's what happens when you have a team that isn't completely trash. Let's and for anybody who runs a bar. Nearly free drinks and angry patrons is not a good mix. Number 12. Science Class Gone Wrong High school science classes are designed for a few purposes, but one of the biggest is to make sure students know what is and is not dangerous. But what happens when you have a teacher who isn't all that focused on safety? You end up with a $27 million trial. That's what. In 2014, Alonzo Yanes was a student at Beacon High School in New York, but he would soon become something of a local celebrity, and not for the reasons he probably had. Helped. The science teacher, Anna Poole, was conducting an experiment to show how salts change color when exposed to methanol. Just weeks before the incident, one federal agency had warned about the dangers of the experiment, citing a number of accidents across the country in two decades. Sure enough, a large fireball exploded, setting Alonzo on fire. It was one of the most gruesome incidents to happen in a city school in years, and prompted high schools to take a fresh look at how they approached their experiments experiments. Five years later, Alonzo decided to take action, taking the Department of Education and his former teacher to court for $27 million. Alonzo's body had been left scarred from third-degree burns, and the court saw fit that he should be awarded almost $60 million in damages. I guess the lesson here is beware of school experiments. Number 11. Vladimir Demikov 
It's a classic trope of horror and sci-fi fiction. The two-headed beast. Well, my friends, it turns out that it's very much rooted in reality. Yes, back in the 1950s, one Soviet doctor decided it would be a good idea to play God and create his own two-headed creature. Seriously. Back in his day, Vladimir Demikov was a pioneer in his field. That field was one he made up, transplantology. Demikov had successfully pulled off a series of organ transplants between his subjects of choice, dogs. But Demikov was getting bored of just shifting organs from one dog to another and couldn't shake a genius idea. What if he could take the head of one dog and put it on another fully intact? Demikov and his teams performed the surgery some 24 times, some more successful than others, but the 24th was the only one to get publicized, with the photos even making it into Life magazine. While not the most successful of the efforts, it worked. The dog's heads both had all their senses, though the second dog had no stomach. Anything she ate or drank just flowed onto the floor. Four days after being brought into the world, the two-headed dog died. Not quite enough to beat the previous record, 29 days, seriously. Number 10. The Aversion Project Throughout history, there have been some truly abhorrent acts committed upon humanity, and even worse, many of them have been committed during some of the worst times imaginable. During the apartheid era in South Africa, the military had a dual policy on homosexuality. Permanent members of the force could not be homosexual, but conscripts could be. The policy was adopted because officials believed that banning homosexuality from the military would provide young men with an excuse to avoid service. But with toleration of homosexuality came forced therapy, such as compulsion shock therapy and castration. This violated basic human rights. Victims were also said to have suffered chemical castration and electric shock treatment meant to cure them of homosexuality, which propaganda claimed was mental illness. Concerned about the potential other human rights violations that could have taken place, a team of academic researchers and activists came together to begin the Aversion Project, a research mission to fully investigate the scope of these appalling experiments. Their findings led Aubrey Levin, the mastermind behind the atrocities, to be sentenced to five years in prison. He remains convinced that everyone volunteered for the experiments and that they were worth it. Number 9. Nazi Experiments in the grand scheme of history, there are a million and one reasons to hate the Nazis. Their extreme genocidal ambitions are, of course, the biggest one. But if you happen to be on the lookout for another reason to hate them, welcome to the secret Nazi laboratories. From 1933 to 1945, Nazi Germany carried out a campaign to eliminate persons viewed as biological threats from healthy German society. The Nazis enlisted the help of physicians and medically trained geneticists, psychiatrists, and anthropologists to develop these extreme racial health policies. The Nazis conducted experiments on a variety of topics, including how to best use drugs and treatments in their war effort, how to best preserve the health of German soldiers, and how to further the racist and ideological goals of Hitler's Third Reich. After the war, few scientists who helped to implement and legitimize these policies were ever charged with crimes or punished professionally. Many continued their careers in medicine. Most modern scientists reject the conclusions of experiments performed in Nazi concentration camps due to the inhumane and involuntary conditions under which they were conducted. On an ethical level, no self-respecting scientist could ever bring themselves to use that material and feel good about their work. It would always be tainted, and let's be honest, nobody wants to share credit with the Nazis. Number 8. Lab X 
not many people ever get to see for themselves, but on the outskirts of Moscow, there sits a strange beige building. It's known as the Scientific Research Institute Number 2, or NII2 for short. It's hard to see anything happening from the outside, but there's stuff going on. Officially, whatever happens inside NII2 is a state secret, but there have been many former Russian intelligence officers who have confirmed that it's home to the Kremlin's poison factory founded in 1921 by Lenin himself. Thanks to Pavel Sudoplatov, Stalin's former spy chief, we know a great deal about what happens in the so-called Lab X. Back in the day, it was led by Professor Grigory Myronovsky. He was known to inject people with poisons under the guise of a routine medical checkup, and by people, I mean political enemies of the government, and as far as we know, Lab X was still producing poisons as recently as the late Soviet period, and possibly even later. Many have suggested that the very public poisoning of Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia in the UK was achieved with poison produced in Lab X. Of course, there's no way to know for sure, but hey, it's not the most implausible theory in the world. Number 7. North Korean Human Experimentation North Korea has long had a very well-earned reputation for being completely insane. I mean, seriously, we're talking about a glorified cult with nuclear weapons, but what happens behind the scenes is somehow even more terrifying than everything we already know. I wish I was kidding. Several North Korean defectors have made public comments to suggest that things in the homeland are significantly worse than anybody thinks. The accusations that have been made have been described as very very plausible by officials throughout the West, but questioned by North Korean citizens themselves. The allegations detail potential human experimentation, including suffocation in gas chambers, testing of deadly chemical weapons, and straight-up surgeries on prisoners without anesthetic. Whoever is in charge of these facilities has also allegedly made efforts to study physical resistance in their subjects by starving them to death. Honestly, reading about it all in detail is one of the most depressing experiences I've ever had. The real sad part of the whole thing is that there's no way to know if this is true or not. As many experts have pointed out, North Korean defectors tend to exaggerate their claims when they flee, making it hard to try and work out the truth from the fiction. But honestly, given how wild North Korea is in its own right, it's probably true. Number 6. Tuskegee it's one of the most notorious experiments in history, but how much do you know about the Tuskegee experiments? Probably not enough, honestly. The fact that it even happened is one of the most depressing events in human history. Welcome to Tuskegee. In 1932, there was no known treatment for syphilis. As people continued to die from this infection, scientists began seeking some kind of solution to the problem in Macron County, Alabama, some one had a much more sinister and unethical solution. 600 African-American men were recruited under the belief that they were being treated for bad blood for free. Of these men, around 399 had latent syphilis, and 201 did not. Unfortunately, the experts in charge did not provide them with health care at all, instead plying them with placebos and diagnostic procedures that did nothing. While they were promised, the study would take six months, it took 40 years. By 1947, penicillin was widely available and could have been used as a treatment for these unfortunate victims, but instead, researchers opted to continue until 1972, when a leak exposed the study to the world. By then, 128 of the subjects had died, and the study was widely criticized around the world as a major violation of ethics standards. It's often cited as one of the biggest causes of distrust in medical science and the U.S. government amongst African Americans. And honestly, who can blame them? This should never have happened. Number 5. Project MKUltra 
Life in the mid to late 20th century was uh, quite a time. As the so-called Red Scare began taking hold across the West, the reactions became extreme, nonsensical, and in some cases, just weird. I'm sure most of you know what MKUltra is, but do you know why it exists? Get ready. During the early days of the Cold War, the CIA had developed an unusual theory that communists were somehow able to control human minds. In their it was completely impossible to imagine that someone may just have different beliefs. Convinced that this was happening, the CIGA began a new secret project, MKUltra, designed to find a mind-controlled drug that would be used against America's foes. Between the 1950s and 60s, Sidney Gottlieb ran the operation, finding secret funding for his project from universities and research centers and conducting them in prisons and detention centers everywhere from America to the Philippines. According to those in the know, the experiments included everything from electroshock to high doses of LSD. And did it ever amount to anything? Nope. Well, other than a lot of traumatized victims and a complete outrage to the world at large, MKUltra was nothing more than a desperate fear of communism that spiraled into paranoia, delusion, and state-sponsored torture. Eh, sounds about right. Number 4. Holmesburg Prison Here's one that not a lot of people know about, Holmesburg Prison. While we have a general sense of the things that happened at Guantanamo or Alcatraz, this one has managed to slide under the radar, but it really shouldn't have. Between 1951 and 1974, Pennsylvania's Holmesburg Prison was home to some pretty horrific experiments being conducted against its unsuspecting inmates. Now, these experiments ranged from pretty benign little things to fully traumatic torture studies, we're talking very basic things like commercial cosmetics testing to implants of foreign bodies, ingestion of near-lethal doses of retinoin A, and yanking out fingernails. You know, it really runs the whole scale of experimentation at this place. So how did they manage to slide under the scale for so long? Well, everybody that underwent experimentation at the facility consented in some way or another. While it's not known how, we do know that that they received some kind of financial compensation for their suffering. However, no amount of financial compensation can help get through the long-term effects of undergoing extensive and brutal torture like this. I'm pretty sure that anybody who went through it would agree that they didn't agree to that kind of lifelong suffering. I can't imagine anybody willingly signing up for that. Number 3. Operation Vegetarian when the world went to war against the Nazis in the 1940s, many countries all over the world began looking into creating new ways to combat their attacks. Obviously, we know all about nuclear weapons, but there were also chemical weapons brought into play. In 1942, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill ordered Porton Down, a chemical and weapons testing facility, to find some way to weaponize anthrax. The plan was that they could somehow combat the Nazis before they even knew it. Unfortunately, one of the most known plans, Operation Vegetarian, would have been pretty catastrophic. As I'm sure we all know how deadly anthrax is, depending entirely on how much of it you come into contact with, well, the basic concept of Operation Vegetarian was that Royal Air Force bombers would drop anthrax-laced cattle cakes onto fields filled with German cattle. The cattle would eat the cakes, infecting themselves. The cattle would then either die or infect humans. But the point is that, with the cattle wiped out, you'd also eliminate a good chunk of the food supply. Eventually, Germany would be forced to stay away from meats and milk products, theoretically destroying their morale in the process. It would have been devastating to the German people, likely wiping out millions. And here's the really depressing thing. The only reason it didn't happen, the Germans started retreating. Had they not done that, you wouldn't be seeing any beef in Germany. Number 2. Philadelphia Experiment 
You know, it's gonna be a good one. When there's a movie named after it, the Philadelphia Experiment is one of the biggest mysteries in humanity's history. Did it happen? Is it real? Was it someone's wild fever dream? We have no idea. There are no answers to any of these questions. So let's dig in. According to urban legend, we have to go all the way back to October 1943. It's here that the USS Eldritch was conducting some kind of top-secret experiments to win command of the oceans during the war. One of the biggest rumors was that the government was busy creating technology that would make naval ships invisible to enemy radar, but when they came to test the technology, the Eldridge was suddenly surrounded by an odd green-blue glow. Her generators kicked up and then she vanished, and then reappeared. It's been said that classified military documents confirmed that the crew on board were affected by what happened in some pretty disturbing ways. Some went completely insane, others developed some strange illness, but others, they got the worst fate of all. They were fused together with the ship, alive, yes, but with their limbs sealed in the metal of the ship. That's brutal. Number 1. Operation Lack Shortly after the end of World War II, the US was riding high on victory, but nobody was complacent. Having just lived through one of the most dangerous periods in humanity's history, the US wanted to be prepared for any kind of future conflict. Operation Large Area Coverage, or LAC, was an operation conducted by the United States Army Chemical Corps throughout the 1950s. A C-119 flying boxcar was flown high above the US, releasing microscopic zinc cadmium sulfide particles to test dispersal patterns, as well as the geographic range of potential biochemical weapons. Totally safe, right? Actually, due to the secretive nature of the study, nobody knows if the experiment had any kind of an effect on the population. But one US government study claims that it did not have any kind of impact on human health, that of course is entirely up to you. Despite the US government's commitment to the nobody was harmed narrative, the EPA have since confirmed that the particles dropped over much of mainland America was indeed a probable human carcinogen. So, I guess the US government trying to protect its citizens from being poisoned by poisoning them is ironic. That's one word for it. Which of these experiments do you think turned out worst? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.